I know I'm a 3KD player. I love this game very, very much. Okay. This game has afforded me opportunities to meet some of my closest friends that I know right now. All right. So we're going to react to this. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to jump into what we're jumping into for today. All right. Here we go full screen here with this 1080p. All right. And in the comments too, what I want y'all to do is like, and in, and even in the chat is let me know, you know what I'm saying? Y'all's favorite iteration of Warzone. Everybody got their different opinions. I was talking to my homeboy the other day, right? And one of his favorite is was the Vanguard era. I said, bro, you had to have like a one KD in the game. You had to have a one KD in the game. There's no way. This was this is your favorite iteration of Warzone. There's no way. We get ready to see though. Hold up, chat. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Y'all can't hear the audio. On over five different games. With those games come new metas, maps, and a lot of change. Uh -huh. Some were definitely better than others. Talk I'm to Ornery, me. and today we will rank every era of Warzone. I know it's kind of cheap, but I'm going to try and keep things objective as possible through the lens of the community. I've always got three opinions as well. As far as what makes a good era of Warzone, I think it comes down to how fun and playable the game is. Whether Love it be it. the gameplay changes made, good and balanced metas, memorable oh, Easter eggs, and sheer amount of content and support for the game. Best Let era. me know what your favorite era of Warzone is and why. All right, let's see it. Vanguard may have been one of the most despised Call of Duties, but was surprisingly polarizing when it came to Warzone. Myself wasn't the biggest fan. Please just hear me out on this. I'm not asking you to okay. agree with me, but this state of Warzone was far from perfect for a lot of reasons. Okay. Start with the launch, where we got Caldera. This is probably dead last when it comes to Warzone maps for most people. On top of being a bad map, we were forced to play it, which eventually would blossom into the absolute trash can playlist that we have today. Hey, hold on. I gotta stop right here and say this. Our playlist that we have right now in the game are trash if anybody in warzone is or anybody at activision any devs are listening the the daggum playlist that we have right now in the game are absolutely disgusting fix it also on Caldera, you had the introduction of planes, which was an awful and broken integration that no one was asking for. Once we got settled into the Vanguard era, it was clear to see that all Vanguard guns were leaps and bounds better than any Cold War gun, especially since they all supported 10 attachments. This is where I had my main problem with the Vanguard era was its metas. Every single gun during this time was a low recoil, high damage beam. On top of this, leveling up Vanguard guns took forever, especially if you didn't have the base like game. But if you did levels. have the base game, you were pretty much forced into playing it, which was just torture. Anyways, I know a lot of people's favorite metas were during this time, but I simply could not get behind them. You want to sit here and tell me that the Cooper Carbine, PPSH, STG, Bren, and every gun caught in the Vanguard Wall of Death were balanced? But beyond the metas and being forced to play an awful map, we would have other awful decisions and implementations that would ruin I the game. Call call the, starters, the infamous sniper nerf. This change was kind of all over the place and really targeted the quick scope meta that was hey, just the trash. Swiss K3 and Car 98. All it did was give those snipers a one shot range. Before they would one shot at any range, Ooh. but now they would have to be within i think like 25 or 30 meters meaning you really could only use these guns as quick scope machines it did sort of incentivize using guns like the hdr and ax50 since Ooh. they would still one shot at any range so i guess that was cool but meanwhile guns like the ride tech and m82 still couldn't and those were very slow and remained worthless anyways oh, that change would carry over to warzone 2 but even worse which we'll talk about here in a second however fortune's keep is without a doubt a highlight in the whole vanguard warzone era I know a lot of people Best still prefer rebirth like i do too ever. but fortune's keep definitely holds its own when it comes to the resurgence maps i know for a lot of people this was the most fun a lot of people were having when it came to warzone it's arguably when rebirth was at its absolute peak and i'm not saying i didn't have fun during this state but for me it personally just didn't hit as hard as the other ones okay. I can already hear the Warzone mob at my doorstep oh, as I put Warzone 2 over gosh. Vanguard Warzone. Oh, but once again, no. just hear me out. No, 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 no. I'm not hearing you out, big dog. By the way, this is a great video. Great video. But, bro, I'm not. Okay? I'm not doing that. Okay? I'm not doing that. When you put War, you put Warzone 2 over Vanguard, what are we doing? 
This was without a doubt the worst engine that Warzone had ever been played on, which is very important to note. Horrible movement, clunky gunplay, and AI around every corner, it was just bad. I even made an entire video breaking down Warzone 2's failure. But there are some things that made it redeemable. Start with the maps, which I think all three were phenomenal. Almazar is a great map that gets super underappreciated and somewhat I think hated Almazar's on, and I think that's map. only because it exists on Warzone 2. I bet if you threw this on the rotation with Warzone 3, people would enjoy it. Ashika was controversial and hated on, but I find this to be another great map that is sadly no longer with okay, us. Okay, all right, hold on. Wait, okay, hold on, hold on. Hear me. Hear me on this. Hear me on this. This is going to be a very hot take, but I want you to hear me. The aesthetic of Warzone 2 was beautiful. The aesthetic. What I mean by that is, like, just look at these graphics. Like, the graphics and the way that the game looked was beautiful. Beautiful masterful at the graphics the gameplay absolutely trash throw it away and never pick it up again i'm so happy if we get rid of backpacks and bo6 backpacks and bo6 i'm gonna jump off of a building in adulation because this is insanity what we're getting ready to experience with bo6 I'm currently not playing Warzone right now. Why? Because the game is trash. With Warzone 3, people would enjoy I it. Ashika was controversial and hated on, but I find this to be another great map that is sadly no longer with us. I think if you crank up the brightness and vibrance, you're good to go. Layout is not bad by any means. Then there's Vondel, which is neck and neck with Rebirth Island for a lot of people. Me, personally, it's actually my least favorite of the three Warzone maps on Warzone 2, I but still really good. Anyways, maps aside, let's talk about the big changes going on here. And they're really big. The main one was no one-shot snipers whatsoever. I took the whole Vanguard sniper nerf and raised it to a sniper eradication. This definitely went down as one of, if not the worst decision oh, in all of Warzone. Taking a core fundamental aspect to not only COD, but any FPS at that, and just throw it down the drain. They would try and undo this mess by eventually allowing some snipers to one-shot, but only with the explosive ammo, which nuked your velocity to the ground, making them impossible to use. Anyways, another change was the looting getting a complete overhaul. At launch, we know the infamous backpack looting system that was horrible, but eventually got simplified into the looting system we have today, which I think is perfect. On a side note, this looting system is rumored to go away once Black Ops 6 integration happens, which kind of makes me sad. Love being able to stow extra kill streaks, munitions boxes, armor boxes, whatever. It makes it feel way more no. like a battle royale. No. Regardless of what's happening in the future, this was one of the best changes to Warzone that I didn't even know it needed at the time. We could no. dig into how bad the gunplay is since the visual recoil is still being worked on to make the Warzone 2 guns viable in Warzone 3 with still little to no progress in that regard, which is all the evidence you really need to understand how bad it was. And the right. movement was such a talking point that all I have to say is no slide canceling, no re load canceling stims don't do anything and for a minute there you couldn't even sprint while plating up through the all this trash there is one ever. more highlight in warzone 2 and that's the metas i don't think i've seen such good metas in a one year spawn of warzone as i have with warzone 2 here, kick things off with the rpk which is one of the easiest guns to use and felt really good all around just to kind of like get us familiar with the game then saw the ral which was a high risk high reward gun that you had to control recoil the hemlock ar which i think is one of the best and most fun ars in all of warzone and i think there's a lot of people who would agree with that cronin squad was potentially one of the most balanced metas we've oh, ever seen bro, as I well the you have the lockman 556 which some people were comparing to the launch growl Heck again with no. horrible gunplay the metas actually made it a little bit more enjoyable under the ranking we have the current era which is warzone 3 or warzone 2.5 mw3 warzone or whatever you want to call it now i really I couldn't tell you what the overall consensus from the community is but i have been having a lot of fun with warzone during this state i have not where it actually feels like the devs are <laughs> listening to us and taking responsibility for the horrible decisions from the last two years movement is back where it once was gunplay is much better and we've even gotten small quality of life changes like the removal of overkill but these changes does not bring all sunny skies and rainbows however For starters throughout the entire year we've only gotten one map and that's urzikstan now, urzikstan isn't a bad map by any means but it definitely is not the best I already said my piece on almazra but they could at least throw it into the rotation since they clearly they haven't been working on any new maps for us to play yes. give us some variety when it comes to battle royale on the other hand we that did get rebirth back so after broken. a year and a half so that obviously was a huge win and something that the community desperately wanted things like the car 98 making a return are other signs that deep down inside raven does have a heart there have been a handful of new concepts like ranked resurgence which i personally think works better than 
ranked battle royale. It's giving people more gratification to grind Warzone, whereas before there really wasn't. It was more so like how many kills can you get? Another change is that when something is game breaking, like the snake shots, DG conversion kit, and Renetti, they have been lightning fast to not only fix it, but before fixing them, just remove them from the game entirely. Before it would last for at least a week or two. Sniping has now evolved from no one shots to this middle ground where the fast snipers can still one shot at further ranges while being outgunned by slower and harder to use snipers with infinite range. Apparently Warzone 2 snipers are about to start one shotting without explosive ammo as well and I'm really excited to see what that does to sniping. It obviously is trying to undo the damage of Warzone 2 which is difficult but it has done a great job at that and seems to be getting better with each season. But also still has its other downsides. Yeah, the first being that we have a terrible cheating problem that has only gotten worse. Especially Address with it. MW3 coming to Game Pass, any ranked game is like a coin flip as if you're going to have a cheater in it, which obviously ruins the game for everyone. Their weak spot in Warzone 3 is its metas. I think most people agree that they've become extremely stale and just repetitive. Yep. Nothing but LMGs that all feel the exact same, just yep. a different gun. As far as ARs, we've only had the Ram 7 until most recently when we got the STG. We saw one of the most broken guns in all of Warzone being the, the Interceptor the as well, which bro, was like this gun was so flashbacks. broken. We'll say the HRM 9 was one of the most fun and balanced SMGs it. we've seen, but Absolutely that meta just lasted it. way too long and also ran its course on the community. We can briefly mention the Season 1 Reloaded debacle where people straight up just couldn't oh, load in the game bro, and those that did here. couldn't use their perks or even access their loadout. Obviously not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things, but without a doubt the worst update in Warzone history and completely unacceptable. But if we can continue this trend we're on currently with some improvement and diversity in the meta, the Black Ops 6 integration is looking really nice. The second most enjoyable state of Warzone. This is where you lost with me, the fact bro. that for the entirety of Cold War era, this Rebirth is Island and Verdance me. were always playable. Just think about that for a minute. Anyways, I could write a book as to why Rebirth and Verdance are the two best maps in all of Warzone, but that would be beating a dead horse. I mean, it's pretty evident with Warzone 3 that when Rebirth was brought back, it was one of the greatest updates of all time. Verdance also got its 1984 reskin, which many people like more than the traditional map, but I'll let you guys argue about that in the comments the section. Moving forward, was probably so the fun. one and only thing keeping me from putting this at number one was the existence of the DMR meta. Oh, that this gun was nasty. One of the worst metas we had ever seen in Warzone and made the game unplayable and unenjoyable. Sniping, mid range, and even close range agreements were completely ruined. Anyways, that was at the launch of Cold War Zone, but oh, pretty much every gosh. meta after that was one people really enjoyed. And this had the FFAR. What else do I need to Love say here? It. Another really cool feature about the Cold War integration was that the Modern Warfare guns were still usable and were actually still getting updates to that game, which meant more guns to come. But a lot of you didn't know that the Psycop was added to Modern Warfare 2019 months yep. after Cold War launch, which is something that we haven't seen since. Then guns like the Amax were a meta contender for the entirety of Cold War, despite being a Modern Warfare 19 gun. Compare that to today, where if you load up in Warzone with just about any MW2 gun, you're going to be at a massive disadvantage. Yes. Then we had legendary events like the 80s Action Hero event, where Love we could get it. massive POIs added to the game that shook up your experience. Cold War took the gameplay of Warzone and didn't make any dramatic changes, which was just for the better. We're still playing on the exact same engine, only now we had a brand new map with Resurgence, which would obviously become a hearsay that the community had fallen in love with and brought in a ton of new players while doing so. Yep. Come on now, is this really totally that surprising? Disagree. Just before we were struck with the pandemic, we were given one of the greatest things to use with this newfound free time, that being Warzone. Launch Warzone quickly became a worldwide phenomenon that was everybody's go-to game for the majority of the pandemic. The new Battle Royale inside the COD franchise, there was a lot of hype surrounding it, and it delivered. New concept being a 1v1 gulag to get back in the fight was a very refreshing take on what people saw as a dead genre at it the was, time. Though. Anyways, we only had Verdansk until Cold War to come along, and people were okay with that. With 150 players to keep the pacing right Dude, why we I haven't had 150 them. players on our big maps anymore but Thank i think you. that helped out verdansk big time on top did. of this we had some fan favorite metas the growl the kilo the bruin the m13 the mp5 the car 98 hdr and several others Dude. on top of this we also had a lot of brokenness going on snake shots being the first of three separate iterations that were completely overpowered infamous oh. famas underbarrel shotgun that might as well acted as a sniper thermal scope meta making sniping easier than ever before as valve being able to shoot through the entire map while main Maintaining its damage. These massive bugs, exploits, mistakes, or whatever you want to call them, gave us a very memorable experience and was hitting that Modern Warfare 2 2009 brokenness, which gave that game some charm. On top of this, this was the most content we have ever gotten in such a small period of time. The keycard bunkers, which were an awesome addition. Then after that, it seemed like there was always a new Easter egg to complete that always gave you something to do. Yeah. Bunker 11 had some zombie Easter egg depth to it that gave That's you exclusive true. content. Hidden Subway was another in depth Easter egg that I couldn't even imagine being in Warzone today. Zombie Royale, which had become a main. Love 
playing bitch. Warzone every Halloween. Way more limited time in experimental modes that always gave us something new. Maybe it's nostalgia, but I, and I'm sure a lot of you will agree that Launch Warzone was like catching lightning in a bottle that continued into Cold War for a little bit, but then has been lost since. Hopefully Black Ops 6 can continue to undo the damage of Vanguard and Cold War, Ooh. but I guess we'll see. Let me know what you guys think. Once again, this is just my opinion and I tried to keep things objective through the community's eyes, but I would love to know what your all's favorite state of Warzone was, so go ahead and drop your ranking down below. If you want to hear me talk about forgotten metas, the entire history of the gulag, snipers, or shotguns, go ahead and click here. Love Join my it, Discord bro. if you're feeling crazy, and if you like... Hey, this was a W video. W video right here. W video. Here's what I'm going to disagree with. I think Warzone 2, because of the aesthetic, okay, because of the aesthetic, and you can call me crazy, in my opinion, because of the aesthetic of Warzone 2, I think it's higher than Warzone 3. Because of the aesthetic, not the gameplay, the aesthetic, the way that it looked. If war okay, I want y'all to think about something for a second. I have some of my notes. Think about this for a second, okay? If Warzone 2 looked looked Okay, stop. Picture this, okay? We're playing Warzone 3 right now, okay? But we're playing, but let's say we're playing this game currently with Warzone 2's beauty. Oh, bro, this is a W game. But Warzone 3 is like a semi-upgraded version of Warzone 1. We took nothing. We took nothing aesthetically from Warzone 2. Nothing. We just left everything in the past and said, okay, we're just done with the entire game completely. Aesthetic and all. We're just done. I don't know if I like that, bro. If I'm gonna be honest. I think you combine Warzone 3 with Warzone 2's aesthetic and the updates that we got from Warzone 1. Oh, bro. You you have the you have a masterpiece on your hands. You, you have a masterpiece. No question. No question about it. You have a master.